Chapter 508 What Mike really meant was, you, Alex Anderson, are nothing but an outsider. Please stay away from the Baker family's affairs. Burton felt as if he had fallen from the sky to hell when he heard his heartless father's remark. He realized that he had been tricked, very miserably too. His father had never wanted to give him the chance at all. Even if he surrendered his mother's precious snow ginseng to plead Alex to save his family, his father would never want to elect him as the company's chairman. Alex frowned in dismay and asked coldly, Oh? Are you planning to break your promise? Mike quickly explained, Oh no, Master Anderson, that's a misunderstanding. There's something that you aren't aware of. Well, the other day, I told both my sons that whoever could solve this problem for our family will have a bigger chance to be the chairman. Of course, I'll give Burton credit for what he did for the family today, so when it comes to the election for the chairman position, he'll have a higher chance of winning. Mike was being completely shameless and dishonest. He changed his claim from confirmation to having a bigger chance, which turned the control of the agenda back into his hands. It was like tossing a coin in his hand in which he could decide on heads or tails, who could win his game. Alan was a little agitated by Alex's interference. Sean left anyway, and the crisis had been resolved, so he had no reason to be afraid of Alex anymore. He blurted in annoyance, Alex, it's our family's affairs, it's none of your business. Get out of here when we ask nicely, there is no place for you to be so rude in our house. Mike was an ungrateful old dog himself. Since his son was so straightforward, he said directly, frankly speaking, I will never hand over my company to the son of a bitch from Mount Gallman. I've slept with so many women in my entire life and this bastard's mom was the worst of them all. She was nothing but a fucking village girl. I only slept with her because I was young and I had to release myself, otherwise, I wouldn't even bat an eye at her. Burton growled angrily. What did you just say about my mother? Mike arched his eyebrow in disdain and shouted coldly, What? Do you want to talk back to me now? You really are the son of a bitch. After so many years, we've let you stay under the roof, we've fed you, we've provided you with education, and this is how you repay us? How dare you want a place in the Baker family business? From now on, you're no longer part of our family. Get the hell out of here. Burton dropped his head, disappointed, and stood sullenly on the side. He had admitted defeat, he had only his naivety to blame because he believed Mike. If so, he had no purpose to stay in the Baker family anymore. It was better to just cut ties with them. Burton clenched his fists, gritted his teeth, and said, All right. From now on, I have nothing to do with the Baker family. Alan was extremely thrilled. He smirked, bastard, who are you to decide you have nothing to do with us? We've wanted to kick you out from a long time ago, don't you know? It's such a waste of our efforts to raise you for so many years. Alex asked Mike coldly, Mike Baker, are you sure this is what you want to do? Mike sneered contemptuously, again, this is our family's affairs and has nothing to do with you. You've overstayed your welcome, now get out. Mike didn't believe that Alex had some sort of a powerful background, he was just a person who happened to have a cure for Sean's disorder. This nobody couldn't do anything about him. Now that Sean was cured and left their house, he had nothing to do with the Baker family even if he was hit and killed in a car accident. So, why did he have to bother himself with Alex?